What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Rain Slider and Slider Theme widgets. Rain Slider widget, as the name suggests, is used to select a range from a range of values, whereas Slider Theme widget is used to specify the themes and colors for various components of Rain Slider and Slider widget. Along with these, I'm going to be talking about the Slider widget, which is used to select a single value by sliding over a slider. So that was just a quick introduction. And without any further ado, let's get into the details. By default, we have this basic app that just contains two widgets, namely Material App and Scaffold. For the body of the scaffold, we're going to write Center, and then we'll pass Slider Container as Child for this container. Moving on, the Slider Container would be a stateful widget. Now, you're going to need to come inside of the Build method and write range slider. And it shows this yellow line, which means that we have not provided the range slider widget with some required arguments. So we need to specify a minimum value and a maximum value. So we'll just create two variables at the top of this class, which would define the lower value and the upper value. We'll set the lower value to 1.0 and upper value to 10.0. Then we're gonna come inside of the range slider widget and set the min to lower value and max to upper value. Now we also need to specify another parameter called values. The slider's thumbs are drawn at horizontal positions that corresponds to these values. And we can just modify the value that we pass to the values parameter to reflect the change of thumbs position in the UI. The values parameter accepts range values. So we'll just create a new variable above the build method of type range values and name it values, then initialize it. And it takes a start and an ending value. So for the start, we'll just pass low value and for the end, we'll pass upper value. After that, we'll just pass this variable to values parameter. The final thing that's left is the onChanged callback. So every time when you try to drag the slider, the onChanged method is called and it returns with a value of type range values. Then, inside of the onChanged, we'll just write setState and set the values to val. So every time when you try to drag one of the thumbs of the slider, we are provided with a new value from the onChanged callback. And then we utilize that value to override the values parameter so that we can visualize the sliding of the thumb on the slider. Alright, so I'll launch the app and show you what we have so far. Great. So we were successful in making a basic slider. And if you try to drag it, it is dragged. Now let's try to find out about the values that we received from the onChanged callback. Come inside of the onChanged callback and write print val. Hot reload the app and now when you drag from the left, the start parameter changes and you can see the end parameter changing when you drag from the right side of the slider. All right, so these were the parameters that you need to provide in order to see or use the range slider widget. Let's see what more does range slider provides us. So I'm going to come inside of the range slider widget and I'm going to press control space to list out all the parameters that we have. For example, we have the active color, divisions, inactive color, key, labels, on change, end, on change, start, and semantic formatter callback. So the active color is basically the color of the track that is active. For example, I'm just going to write active color, colors.red. After that, we also have uh, something called inactive color. So I'm going to write inactive color, colors.green. Now watch what happens when I try to reload the app. There we go. So you can see that the active track or the track that is in between the two thumbs acquires the color that you pass to the active color parameter, whereas the rest of the portion of the track which is considered to be inactive, acquires the color that you pass to the inactive color parameter. So in this way, you can modify the looks of the range slider widget based on the theme of your app. After that, we have another parameter called divisions. So divisions is basically responsible for dividing your track into equal intervals. So for example, if I'm gonna write divisions five and I'm gonna hot reload the app, there we go. So as I try to drag the thumb, it snaps to position, which means that the complete value from 0 to 10 is divided into 5 equal intervals. 
After that, we have another very useful property called labels. Range slider allows us to show some labels to the user. So for example, if I write labels, and this is a value of type range labels. So I'm going to write range labels. And now range label takes two strings, namely string start and string end. So for the start, I'll write values dot start dot to string. Then for the end, I'll write values dot end dot to string. Now watch what happens when I reload the app and try to drag the thumb. There we go. So a label appears on top of the thumb depicting the values that the user is currently on. After that, we have on change end and on change start. So as soon as you hold the thumb and start dragging, on change start callback is triggered. Whereas when you stop dragging and lift the thumb, on change end callback is triggered. Another two parameters are key, which is basically used to identify a specific widget. And the second one, which is left, is semantic formatter callback. It is simply a callback which is used to create a semantic value from the slider's values. It's time for us to define some themes for the range slider widget. Sure, the default one looks great. And even though you can modify it using the active color and inactive color values, but there's always a possibility that you might need more customizations. By default, every slider or range slider widget inherits its default looks from another widget called slider theme. And we can use the slider theme to provide new and modified values to our slider. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is to wrap the range slider widget with another widget called a slider theme. And slider theme takes just two parameters, excluding the key parameter. The first one is data and the other one is called child. We've already made use of the child parameter. Now we'll need to write data. And this accepts a slider theme data. So either you could pass the slider theme data like this and change various properties according to your need. Or you could write slider theme dot off context dot copy with. This copy with basically creates a copy of this object, but with the given fields replaced with the new values. All right. Now, if you press control space, you can see that it lists a very large list of properties that you can customize according to your need. So we have properties such as active tick mark color, active track color, and then their disabled versions. Basically, you can modify everything that you can possibly think of. And I encourage you to play with all these options on your own, because I'm not going to be trying it all in the video. Although I would like to show you some interesting ones, starting with the height property. That's right. You can modify the height of your range slider by writing track height and set it to any value, for example, uh, 15. It does looks a bit weird, but you might want to use track height for some smaller values. After that, we have the overlay color. So if I tap and hold on any one of these thumbs, notice that there's a very light circle that scales up to help us depict that we have successfully grabbed a thumb. You can change the color for that overlay using overlay color. Or if you just don't want it, you can simply set the color to color start transparent. In order to make overlay color take effect, you would need to remove the active color and inactive color. Then you can also define minimum thumb separation. But thumb separation only works if you have not divided your range slider into multiple divisions. So you would need to remove the divisions parameter from over here. So if I set it to 100, both of these thumbs will remain away from each other. So you can define a minimum range using this property. After this, almost every other property is quite straightforward. Although if you search for a shape, you would find many different properties that produce interesting results, such as range thumb shape or tick mark shape and even track shape. For example, range thumb shape accepts a round range slider thumb shape which allows us to specify an enable thumb radius and a disable thumb radius, which basically means that you can control the size of the thumb. Last but not the least, we're going to be talking about the slider widget. And I'm also going to show its application by creating a simple brightness controller. Just replace the range slider from slider. And this also takes a min and a max value. Now sliders properties are not named as plurals. So labels, should be called label and values should be called value. Now I'm going to go at the top 
and create a double variable called brightness and set it to zero. Then I'll set this brightness as a value for the label as well. I'll write brightness.abs to show the absolute decimal value. And then finally, I'm going to write to string. We would also have to specify an initial value for the range slider. And for that, I'll pass the newly created brightness variable to the value parameter of the slider widget. Since we are dealing with double values, therefore the onChanged callback also returns a double value. So I'll just replace this values variable with brightness and we're all set. You can see the changes that we have made. So now we have this single slider, which is draggable from left to right. All right, so that's it about sliders, range sliders, and slider theme. Now I'm just going to quickly demonstrate a cool usage of range slider. So I'll go over to the pubspec.yaml and add this dependency called screen. After that, I'm going to go inside of the Android folder, then app, src, main, and open up the Android manifest file. So in order to change the brightness, you need to add the wake lock permission in Android. For iOS, I don't think it requires any extra configuration. Now I'm going to come inside of the main.dart and import the screen package. After that, you need to come inside of the onChange method and write screen dot set brightness and pass in the brightness. Oh, and you also need to change these min and max values because brightness can only take values ranging from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. So I'm going to hard code those values over here. For min, we'll write 0.0, .0 and for max, the value should be 1.0. And that's pretty much it. So as I slide the slider, the brightness of the screen changes. Great. Now, since you are working with Flutter, mostly we are developing for both Android and iOS. So you can use the slider.adapter widget, which adapts itself based on the platform that your app runs on. So on Android, the slider looks like this. Whereas on iOS, it looks like the Cupertino slider. But what if you're developing only for iOS? Well, in that case, you can use another widget called Cupertino slider. And this widget renders a Cupertino style slider. So as soon as I reload the app, there we go. We have a Cupertino slider. All right. So that's it for this video. To summarize, I talked about range slider widget, how to customize them, how to get data from them. Then I talked about slider widget, how to create an adaptive slider, how to use it inside of the application to modify some data. And finally, we saw Cupertino slider widget. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you're new to the channel, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.